Thank you. Okay, so um, the uh, the idea this was a, a suggestion that uh, I, I cover in this uh, survey lecture uh, topics uh, on uh, really uh, five and six G, mostly six G um, activities at links. Right? So uh, what will I cover? Um, I will cover the first, I mean, the topics themselves, and then we'll make a few zooms, one on RIS, one on NTN, and one on RIS and NTN. Um, I will also, if time allows, but it's not essential, uh, discuss workshop organized and uh, and some uh, uh, joint publications and things, things like that. Huh? Okay, so um, let me start with the uh, research topics on cellular networks more generally. Uh, radio access network um, is a quite important part of our uh, research uh, agenda. RIS, uh, cell free, we heard the lecture uh, a bit earlier. Uh, millimeter waves, uh, the role of obstacles. Uh, beam forming, we had lots of activities on uh, adaptive beam forming and, um, and uh, uh, overhead due to beam forming, uh, associated with beam forming. Um, and uh, I will survey, I mean, uh, uh, how this is uh, connected to uh, the new center, which uh, was mentioned by Daniel Peupere, an SNS project called Instinct, uh, and with the various links workshops on the matter, including the RIS workshop in 24. Uh, there is lots of activity also on uh, uh, more broadly at the same time IoT, IETF, and five uh, six G, three uh, GPP uh, problems related to uh, massive access, uh, the entanglement of uh, coding when you have uh, 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 critical time constraints, uh, ULLC, uh, and so I will describe that. Thank you. Merci. Okay, it seems to work. And there is a way to beam. Ah, okay, excellent. Very good. Uh, so, um, yes, and so as you know, I mean, these type of things are published in uh, uh, IEEE uh, journals, um, uh, information theory, communication, wireless. Uh, various conferences uh, that are listed here. Okay, and the researchers involved uh, in all these activities. I, I will say a few words on the uh, on the uh, real time, in particular, uh, aspect uh, and these uh, things that we uh, started with uh, Kefeng. Feng. Um, uh, and I have listed the researchers who are not with us anymore, like Sankem Kalanka, who is now with Qualcomm, uh, Pierre Popino, who was hired by uh, Constellation Technology. You remember it, we had a discussion of this BPI. I think, and uh, uh, Nokia Bell Labs, very strong activity, uh, Guo Dong uh, Sun uh, 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 with a PhD student, Luis Uzeda Garcia, who was here yesterday, Stefano Paris, uh, among others, right? Um, there is a, an activity also uh, uh, on uh, vehicular networks or more generally on uh, networks with mobile base stations which is quite an uh, interesting topic, I think. Uh, there was lots of uh, things on vehicular uh, networks and their interaction with cellular structures. Um, and uh, we had a workshop in 22 on the topic and a lot of interest on the, the CV2X uh, activity of Qualcomm, for instance, uh, uh, which is actually uh, led by people who are former uh, students at Lynx, right? Um, and uh, performance guarantees or delay guarantees in vehicular safety communications. Um, the uh, uh, activity on uh, 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 um, UAVs and, and uh, satellite networks, uh, I will survey that in one of the Zooms. Uh, it's part of the PEPR. Uh, it's part of an international project with South Korea. It's a STAR project. It's part of the BPI uh, project on, uh, with, uh, set, uh, with uh, Constellation Technology. And there is lots of interest uh, uh, at, at Bell Labs on that, uh, mostly in Finland, actually. I will describe that a bit later. <coughs> Researchers involved. So we have uh, uh, Sanjoy, you heard uh, Sanjoy's talk. Um, um, uh, myself, at EMT, Laurent de Cresfond, you heard his lecture. Philippe Martins, who did not uh, give a lecture, but he's very active in uh, all these topics. 
uh, at Nokia Bell Labs, I mean, the uh, uh, student who started the field of uh, using stochastic geometry to represent uh, spatial networks, uh, I mean, uh, uh, LEO and MEO satellite uh, is an Iranian student uh, who got her PhD in, uh, in, the, um, uh, in Finland, and uh, she was hired by Bell Labs. And so, uh, and she's, uh, she's related to our Lewis group. And uh, there is lots of activity um, at uh, Systemics, and uh, you heard the lecture of uh, Francesca uh, uh, yesterday on uh, mobile network. And so this goes to also trans, uh, trans IT uh, uh, transactions and wireless communications um, and the uh, classical uh, uh, conferences of the field. Okay. Um, I add to that, and I think uh, we should see that as a continuum, all the research on, uh, on network mathematics, stochastic geometry, dynamics, uh, queuing, uh, random graphs, uh, and the researchers involved uh, are uh, for the ERC part, Bartek, uh, Sayek, and uh, who is, uh, uh, finished her PhD last year. Ali Kazeli, who left, is back to Iran. Pierre Popino, I mentioned, uh, Barat Roy who is in the room. Uh, at at ATMT, Laurent de Cresson and Philippe Martin. So this is more uh, mass oriented, but I mean, uh, we develop the tools that we uh, use for understanding all these topics. And I think we should see this as a continuum. And it is, in fact. Okay, so let me go to the Zooms. The first uh, Zoom we are very uh, uh, proud of because it really links uh, activity, uh, very strong activity. Uh, thanks to the uh, work of uh, Guadon, who is uh, hopefully in the room, I think. Uh, where is he? Yeah, here. Uh, it's uh, RIS uh, Enhanced Cellular Networks, right? And so, uh, uh, so the, the, the real here uh, features, I mean, uh, cells. So this is uh, not yet done for, <laughs> for uh, cell-free networks. Uh, so the classical cell uh, organization with obstacles, uh, uh, UEs, uh, and uh, base stations, right? And the general idea uh, is that uh, for, uh, especially millimeter waves, or uh, uh, which are, uh, as we know, very uh, sensitive to obstacles, you might use the RISIs displayed in a, in, in, uh, in, in a very organized way to, uh, to bypass the obstacles and to get uh, coverage in uh, regions which would not be covered uh, from the base station without the presence of the RISIs, right? And so um, the general idea is that we looked at the case where we have a reflection uh, of, uh, of uh, base station signals by RISIs, which are displayed, they displayed in, the, in the plane. And the model, uh, we developed a new model um, uh, in the thesis of, uh, of Guodong, where we have, um, a, 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 it's called the Matern cluster point process. And so it can be put uh, either around the base stations or around holes of coverage. And so this is a parametric model, which is computable. You can compute the uh, Laplace transform of this uh, fellow. Uh, Poisson cloud around the Poisson mother points, which would be either the base stations or the holes. And you display RISIs there in a ring. And you're interested in what happens in terms of improvement of coverage uh, uh, and uh, improvement of uh, spectral efficiency uh, within this framework. Great. So that's the, uh, that's the thing. The system level questions are, the influence on spectral efficiency of the geometry of clusters, should they be more or less spread? Uh, the organization of resources, is it better to have bigger or less services uh, or the other way around? And uh, determining the optimal configuration uh, 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 for this optimal configuration coming from the first point uh, to get the mean spectral efficiency gain brought by, RIS, uh, brought by uh, the risk deployment and the dependence of this on the gain function of obstacle density and things of this type, right? Um, okay, the main novelty is, uh, so there are lots of works on risk analysis, but essentially uh, very simplified things with one or few links. Uh, here, this is a system level analysis where you, thanks to the Matern uh, point process, look really at the inference created by the reflection by the risks and uh, use all the extend all the machinery that we uh, uh, had developed with, uh, earlier uh, for the uh, cellular case to this uh, new new framework right okay so uh, this is our paper which is an archive um, and here is a typical result uh, uh, of that we uh, that uh, we can get from that which is in uh, so the red curve 
is just what happens in a cellular network when you densify. When you densify, there is a, a, there is a threshold after which uh, you have uh, diminishing uh, uh, results, right, in terms of spectral efficiency. And because interference become dominant and too much interference uh, kills you, right? And so uh, the uh, blue and the green curve tell you the branch points. Uh, so if you want to avoid this uh, thing uh, of uh, uh, investing on BS only for densification, this would be the branch point and the gains in terms of spectral efficiency that you would get if you should would start deploying RISs uh, at rather than deploying base, more base stations, right? And so, of course, there is a very important thing, which is the uh, uh, and these are scenarios where you look at the uh, relative cost of a base station and uh, and the risk uh, within this pattern model, and you see how to uh, how things uh, behave in a certain range, uh, and see what the risks could bring in in six G, right, in terms of uh, improving spatial efficiency, which you wouldn't get without them by densifying uh, a base station. Okay, so that's one uh, line of thought. Second line of thought, the NTN. So there was also a question on that. Uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, we developed um, uh, a new model based on Cox point processes uh, uh, to uh, represent, I mean, the, so you think of, there is a planar structure that uh, is familiar now to, uh, to uh, it's, it's used throughout, right, where you, you get the uh, Poisson point process of base stations, and then you have the cellular structure, and you compute the spectral efficiency by looking at the law of SINR within this framework. But in fact, you can change the geometry. Some people do it for hyperbolic geometry. I mean, like uh, Curia, for instance. And we did it for uh, the uh, for the uh, the spherical geometry in the Cox setting, right? Because the uh, main idea can, comes back to the, the thesis of Nilufa in uh, in in Finland, right? I will uh, say a bit more on that, right? And so you see here um, uh, a, a, a mechanism where you see orbits. These orbits have a given the the, the um, um, inclination of this orbit is is given, and this is this is what, for instance, Kuiper or um, or uh, uh, Skype, um, uh, well, the the uh, basic all the current uh, uh, examples uh, of uh, of this um, uh, current uh, deployment of constellation and uh, uh, the uh, are with a given inclination, and the idea is that you are not in, there is no return in the in the polar region, right? And so uh, the uh, so you you have this inclination of the orbital planes, and then there you put satellites on la on this uh, on these uh, orbits, um, and uh, uh, and uh, so and, and we developed I mean uh, a, a model for that. And they, out of that, you can uh, answer lots of uh, system questions, uh, system level question again, interaction and interference between the 5G terrestrial network and the NTN network. Uh, optimal uh, organization of orbits and satellite densities. Uh, how to do 5G offloading uh, in uh, some areas when you have coverage from this uh, spherical uh, uh, type of uh, structure, right? And so uh, the first steps of this line of thought were started by uh, Nilufar in 20 in a, in a thesis using a binaural point process where there is no there is no orbital structure, right? Uh, and the basic questions are those of uh, of a planar uh, a spherical uh, uh, of planar stochastic geometry, but you extend that to spherical uh, characteristics, right? Um, so uh, that's uh, and the questions are again uh, you want to see, for instance, what is the influence. If you use, for instance, uh, 5G millimetric, uh, millimetric uh, um, uh, waves, what is the influence and the interplay between the cellular network on Earth and the cellular network in the in the in, in the low orbit uh, satellite uh, uh, constellation, right? So um, the so this this has started. I mean, we uh, have a couple of papers on that, and um, uh, we. Uh, uh, are interested in uh, indeed evaluating the uh, SINR distribution and the spectral efficiency within this context, right? And so the, the, uh, we got this international funding uh, uh, with uh, South Korea uh, and this BPI uh, uh, um, uh, thing, and this is uh, the BPI will be with uh, Philippe uh, Martins and Laurent de Cosson. Uh, and we have lots, uh, we're starting lots of co operation with uh, uh, very strong uh, young uh, fellows in uh, South Korea 
uh, Namun Lee, uh, uh, Jung Han Park, and uh, in addition to uh, to Chan Tin Chow. Yeah? Okay, good. So that was topic number two. Now Zoom is uh, now. Uh, I want to. Uh, it's not. It's not a joke uh, at all. I mean, uh, uh, um, Greener Wave, which which is the company which uh, uh, was created by Mat Matthias Fink, and you, you, I strongly encourage you to listen to the fantastic talk that Matthias gave uh, at the Links workshop on RIS, right? So they are the one which will provide one web. Uh, with uh, with uh, uh, new antennas which are based on their uh, on their risks on their uh, on their uh, uh, reconfigurable intelligent circuits, right? So RIS and uh, and uh, non-terrestrial network have a very strong interplay, uh, and uh, I could explain a bit more on the antenna side uh, if you have questions on that later, right? But so on the question of how much can reconfigurable intelligent surfaces augment sky visibility. And so I think you are in New York City or in uh, Seoul or in Paris, right? You have these tall buildings and you expect to, to have coverage from satellites, right? But, you, but the cone that you see between these two tall, uh, tall buildings is very small, right? And so the general idea is to uh, equip uh, buildings at the top of buildings with races and to try to see what is the uh, augmentation of sky visibility uh, with RISIs uh, placed on top of buildings. And so we developed a mathematical model that I will describe, right? So this is the general idea. And the, uh, this is pretty much linked to what uh, we said, BPI pushes the idea of having this uh, constellation technology uh, uh, um, um, uh, satellites, which will use the 5G millimeter wave. And so you are very interested in understanding uh, the interplay between the terrestrial part and the non-terrestrial part, right? Okay. Good. Uh, so this is the model. Uh, this is an urban environment, 3D. So uh, you see here what you what you have. Uh, you are here, and there are uh, there are buildings. This building of a height that they've not displayed here, but the, the height is displayed. If you look in this direction, you see these buildings with given heights, right? And uh, these are the heights of the building. And there is a building blocking your view in this direction. Right, this is this uh, this uh, the third building, and so you assume that uh, uh, you install RISIs, either transmissive RISIs or reflective RISIs, on top of all buildings, and you ask the question. I mean, again, the same question as the one we asked ourselves with uh, Guodong. We asked ourselves, what what will, will you win in the end? In terms, uh, in this case, it was in terms of spectral resistance. Here, I would just look at something way simpler, which is coverage, the chance to see to be covered by a satellite that you wouldn't see because of big walls, uh, but uh, that you will see thanks to this, right? So this is the, the, the very, very natural question. Right? <coughs> and so it looks very much like queuing theory, although it's not queuing theory because there are maxitive elements everywhere rather than additive, right? So XI is the homogeneous Poisson point process intensity land on R. HI are the height of the buildings, right? And, uh, uh, and they, they would be exponential in the MM model uh, because the buildings are Poisson uh, displayed on this uh, line. The MD model, I mean, you're all queuing theorists, you guess what it is. Uh, buildings are like in Paris, except uh, uh, Montparnasse Towers, uh, max, max height, uh, let's say deterministic. There is the DM model, there is the GIGI, the GG, and so forth. Okay. So we can redo all of queuing theory. And, um, okay, so that's the thing. And uh, <coughs> um, First, you ask about the uh, visibility angle. I mean, this this uh, this thing blocking your view, right? There is an angle called theta, which is the uh, angle between the ground and uh, this uh, this tall building big view. And believe it or not, the tangent of this angle is fresh which is a heavy tail distribution, which uh, is quite interesting because the uh, you, you know it right by practice that well you are you're in New York City and say oh wow. <laughs> okay, and so, but this will this will this will uh, block your visibility angle and the chance to see a satellite if there is a or UAV. Uh, okay, and this is a fresh air heavy tail distribution with scale parameter rho, which is lambda over mu. You remember what lambda and mu were, and shape parameter uh, alpha, right? And we obtained the uh, Laplace transform um, just obtained from the Laplace uh, function of the PV. It's a maxitive uh, 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 aspect of the Laplace functional. Uh, so max shot noise distribution. And we have closed form expression for MB, DM, and uh, we got lately from uh, N Vibo. 
so and Valgul is, uh, is not bad in certain cities. Okay, and so this is the, we got also the joint distribution of the, uh, of the uh, height of the blocking building and its distance to the user. It's, uh, there are lots of special functions that show up. Uh, there are two modes. There is a transmissive mode and they, they have different characteristics. It's uh, quite uh, surprising. So the, the transmissive mode, you go to this blocking building and you sit here and you, you go, still go to the right. And so it will, the fact that it's the maximal blocking angle will, will uh, have an impact on the, the distribution of, all. and so it creates a long, long uh, distance uh, in, uh, uh, correlation uh, structure, which is leveraged to define the, the, new, the new visibility angle, theta t, right? Uh, from the, uh, uh, this is transmissive mode where the, uh, the RIS or network of RIS is two RISs, right? On one side, the other side of the building would you would connect to that and then uh, that would connect so here you need a, a very fancy RISIs which can follow the satellite the the, the, uh, sat the uh, um, uh, greener wave type uh, RISIs right so which, with lots of electronics to uh, and there is the reflective mode which is the the classical one where you go back and forth right so you go to the left find a building and the reflexive uh, the reflective RIS uh, would uh, uh, connect you to a satellite in the other direction in, in the, uh, compared to what uh, to, 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 to the left. Okay, uh, then I will conclude by uh, on the zoom by just uh, describing two metrics, angular metrics. So, and you see there would be expectation of ratio, the, 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 uh, the ratio of what you can see in the gamma 2T, for instance, uh, in the transmissive mode over uh, the, uh, the Psi without the, the role of the risk. Uh, and uh, exp uh, ratio of expectation. So this would be two metrics, and the other uh, very important metric would would be coverage metrics, right? So um, so let me uh, explain the linear me metrics now. So you see uh, you are blocked by this uh, by this guy, and there is a small L. Then you go to the top of this building, right? And uh, you have a new capital L which extends the small L, right? And so you get close form for all these things, at least in the exponential case and transmissive mode. Here are expressions, I don't want to describe them. Uh, and here, for instance, uh, let's call tau xh the conditional probability of coverage given that this guy blocking you in the transmissive mode is at distance x and as elevation h. Uh, so there is a closed form expression uh, given that the uh, altitude of the, of the, um, uh, of the uh, satellites or UAV is capital H. Uh, you have a closed form expression. When you uncondition, you get special functions, and uh, you see the polylogarithmic function popping from nowhere, right? And so you get closed form expressions for all these objects, and we guess it will be the same. That's for the MM case. It will be the same for others, right? Okay. And so um, here are the results. For instance, uh, the the tau tau is the unconditional uh, chance to be covered given you are not, and you see been quite amazing things. In the, so we took parameters from New York City, so. Uh, of the, uh, that's, I mean, uh, you will be covered with a very high chance uh, in the satellite case, for instance, even if you are not at all uh, uh, in the, uh, because of being in this uh, tunnel, right? Um, okay, very good. So the idea is like that. You have a, so we are starting working on multi-hope. Uh, this is really a 2D model. Uh, there are lots of interesting questions and uh, we have an a, um, archive paper posted um, a few months ago. Okay. What is ongoing? So the, after this three zoom, I will conclude there. Uh, how much uh, time do I have? Two minutes, okay. Right. But I had an interruption of two minutes, no? <laughs> so it's four minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we started looking, and I mentioned that at the economic models for risk. Uh, we have this uh, NTN, the TN interaction uh, with the, uh, which is part of both the STAR and the BPE project. Uh, I, uh, there was a talk, uh, I think, uh, of Kerr last year uh, on the spatial network practice, but we started a new line of thought with Katrin Rosenberg, uh, trying to uh, transform that into uh, controllers, into uh, me mechanisms, uh, much more. So, so spatial network calculus is a mathematical machinery at this stage, but we, uh, we, uh, we have a new way of uh, making um, non-real-time uh, uh, controllers uh, uh, based on that. Uh, there are lots of uh, physical layer and MAC research that started between Catherine and Stefano. 
Uh, and uh, we have a new uh, JCAS, uh, Joint Commission Sensing Project uh, within SNS, uh, which, has, uh, which has a three-year research plan, the PPR, five years, uh, lots of interactions with uh, 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 other countries, right? Okay, so uh, what should I say more? Uh, yeah, collaborative projects. We have this ERC project, which is on network dynamics. It's a, a communication part and a mass uh, part. Uh, we have the ongoing TIF of uh, of um, uh, Guodong, which is uh, funded by uh, Nokia. Uh, and we have the PEPR uh, 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 network of the future. The head is uh, Daniel, and uh, uh, I'm in charge of the uh, foundation part. So there are lots of uh, things of this. Uh, 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 activities, uh, Sense Instinct, BPI Star already mentioned. Okay, so um, we organized four workshops uh, in the uh, recent years. There was the uh, Performance Guarantees Wireless Networks, uh, which was really on U URLLC. Uh, and um, oh, yes, I think Kerr gave the lecture there. She didn't, you did not give the lecture at the last uh, scientific committee meeting, right? D did you? Right, okay, but so she, she did, okay, very good. So, but, uh, okay, uh, we had eight days on network mathematics uh, with lots of uh, fantastic talks because we had three CCs defended, uh, Sayez, uh, uh, Barax, and, uh, and Michel Davidovs. And so we, we had uh, one week uh, full of, uh, of fantastic talks. Um, we have the network communication days. Uh, there was a question of Daniel on that which was uh, really triggered by the presence of Catherine Rosenberg. And we are at this workshop on risk uh, in, uh, in February, right? Okay, uh, on the slides, I have uh, listed the uh, references and uh, details on the conferences, who, was interested, who, who talked at the, uh, at the workshops and uh, things like that. Uh, and that's it. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's fascinating to see. So the, the um, I mean, the, the transmissive versus reflective case or so the transmissive, the fact that you have this this um, tangent of the uh, angle, which is a power law, this fresh distribution, then the reflexive one must, I mean, uh, already from the plot, must improve a lot the visibility of the sky that you get just by reflection right it's it depends it's on it, parameters oh, it depends okay uh, so i have the curve so there. so i was wondering if do, yeah. do you have results also for, for that uh that's uh that's uh I, I, or perhaps i remove the curve but i mean uh yes we have it i have it at least for the yes this curve i have a more oh, uh, well, precise one uh, visibility enhancement this is the uh the, the gamma functions right Gamma one, gamma two, you remember one is the ratio yeah. of expectation to poor man sink, the other expectation of ratio, right? And you see, I mean, uh, you always win, right? So that's uh, because 10 to zero is one, right? And so this is, these are these uh, ratios. But you look at the, uh, and that's uh, uh, based on the formulas, right? So things are crisscrossing, right, each other. So there's no one dominating the other. And okay. uh, that's, uh, there are interesting economic questions because uh, the, the, the reflective one are cheaper. Uh, compared to the transmissive, right? So, transmissive, you so it's these are uh, so you need a, a, something a bit more fancy. Okay. Um, and so there are, uh, but so in a sense, I mean, what is at hand with this? Uh, uh, so we don't have yet the spectral distance; it's just, I mean, visibility, yeah. right? But we'll be in the future able, I suppose, to answer questions of uh, spectral efficiency uh, given the distances. You don't want the risk to be too far. Also, right? Yes. Okay. And so you put you should put a, a cap on the distance, and then uh, then connect there and have the either reflective or transmissive. But you want to see what is the gain in uh, in in coverage because this is what you if you want a deal between uh, a company offering the ter non-terrestrial part and the uh, terrestrial, in especially the the millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, currently uh, people are using KA and KU uh, bounds, right? So if you want that. You have to show what you what the non-terrestrial brings, right? And so in millimeter wave, it will bring this. this, this and then you can make investment and decide whether and convince uh, customers. That's what what happens currently in uh, uh, in all these 
uh, in all these constellations. I mean, so currently they are completely separated. They're not, the CG has the full uh, 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 structure uh, in terms of, the, this is really a flying base station in 6G, right? With all these uh, protocol and uh, connection and uh, uh, aspects of, uh, of a fixed base station. And so, but why should you deploy that in the millimeter way? Okay, yeah. uh, setting. Uh, we think we have an economic answer to this type of questions. Uh, in the same way as the stochastic geometry gives, I mean, uh, incentives of why you should invest in these things, why you should not densify base station and uh, forever and things like that. Right? So that's uh, that's the belief. And, and then I had another question more the the modeling aspect. So the in the MM, um, right. so so you have. Uh, Eights of buildings which are exponential mu, but they are all independent from each other. Yes. So, so essentially, you have a neighborhood which is always mixed between tall buildings and uh, and small buildings. Yeah. I guess if you take an MD, then of course it's it's much different. Do you see big differences oh, between? Yeah. Yes. Look, I mean, uh, even if you change and keep uh, the parametric thing. Uh, so first. Yeah, for instance, if you take heavy tails for the buildings, if you take, I don't know, Pareto buildings, yeah. uh, the, the 3D model leads to fractals. So it's very, very uh, surprising, right? Because what you will see very things, uh, uh, things very tall, far away, right? So it will be very, very, uh, but in uh, for light tail, uh, there is a dominating building and it hides all what is behind. Right. And so, so there are lots of very new uh, features mental pictures in, uh, for analyzing these things. And so, and then uh, it's also very much linked to joint topology and sensing, because assume you, you have your handset, right? You discover the environment and you have to do the measurement part to see what is the setting and to what, which risk to connect, right? And so again, uh, depending on the fractality of the, uh, of the structure, you might have two very different things on the, but the, the distribution matters a lot. Okay. Yeah. The distribution matters a lot. And so there is a new realm of uh, yeah. queuing like things that will be close form. And so we can start our use again, right? Uh, with the, this type of queuing problems. And uh, they have a spatial version. Uh, so it's, it's very funny. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess the, the, uh, the result depends very much on uh, yeah, the density of satellites, right? Right, because if you have plenty of satellites all over, I mean, you yeah. you have direct vision. On. So, this the constellations that are being uh, um, deployed today, they tend to tens of thousands of satellites. Uh, how, yeah. how how do you unpack the the the, the interest uh, for, or the gains that we're going to have with these surfaces? Yeah, first there will be tendencies of limit that because of the impact on radio astronomy, the impact on uh, so pe people are opposing. Uh, there are lot, big uh, big parts of the society, scientific uh, community, which are adamantly, <laughs> but. I mean, whatever the thing, I mean, the, the things are arranged on, on these orbits, okay? Uh, and so uh, with a given inclination. And so uh, the, the thing is that even, uh, uh, so even if you have tens of thousands of satellites in a small uh, uh, angle, you won't see, uh, you, won't, you, you may not see any satellite. It's because the, uh, the, 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 the buildings will block you, right? So, and so this, this, can be taken into account, but the density won't be uh, uh, for a given constellation. Uh, won't give something where uh, just above you in a street uh, is definitely uh, definitely. And I'm saying that the benefit will decrease when the density increase somehow. So uh, right, I, yeah, uh, right. But uh, uh, the uh, there is another thing which we study with uh, Sandoy, which is the handover frequency. Okay. Right. And so uh, here, the end of a frequency, even if you would have local visibility, would be very quite different depending on what you do uh, there, right? Okay. So the end of are very, very costly. Uh, uh, on the on the on the surface, I mean, you have to you have several parabolas on the surface, and you have they are maintained jointly, and you have to swap from one to the other. So it's uh, yeah. Thank you.